we haven't we yes. that is that Absolutely. is a convenience yeah. for people and people use it what what causes the problem though is when you get an email from your what purports to be from your right. bank and uh, Tom maybe you can address this what's what is if you get an email from what purports to be your bank or an insurance company looking for either payment or for confidential information what's the first thing you should do ignore it that's the first thing that you should do you should not respond to it you shouldn't actually try to click onto a link that would pretend to take you back to the bank site um, after that you might want to actually contact the bank by looking up their number and reaching out to them and talking to a live person at the bank but as a general rule banks will never send unsolicited emails to you asking you to take any type of action online. I, I remember a common scam that I've, I've received that says, we think someone's tried to access your account. We're trying to protect you, and they prey on people's mm -hmm. concern about it and said, give us your information. In that instance, the best for you, of course, is to actually call somebody and talk to them, right? Use the right. old-fashioned telephone. Right. 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 They're trying um, to use words like validate. We're trying yeah. to validate your account is safe and stuff like that. But, but, but the general rule is the bank, a legitimate uh, inquiry like that would never come to you on, right. online, and so you should be careful on that. And if you think about it, the bank already has your information. They wouldn't need to contact you to ask you to give them the information that you've already given to them. If you do get such an email, or if you have answered it again, is it appropriate to report it to the bank or to law enforcement authorities? John, what's, what's your sense on, on Actually, that? both. Yeah. Um, if the, you also have the ability to capture as much information um, by copying and pasting what's on, what's on the screen, uh, printing out what's on the screen. So if there's some technical language on there, you can bring it to, uh, to law enforcement. The more information that law enforcement has uh, at the beginning of a tip, um, is, uh, it's more helpful for us to try to figure out what to do with it. Um, at the same time, um, financial institutions have their own investigative arms that uh, know the inner workings of their banks and companies better than we do and may be able to uh, make something of it a lot quicker and then refer it to law enforcement. And they can also tell, because they'll have the data from everybody if you report it, that someone is trying a particular scam or targeting either a financial institution. So it does make sense. I think we should encourage people to report both to us at the state and at the federal level, mm -hmm. as well as the institution itself. Um, and what, let's talk a little bit about, because um, you know, you've worked at the local level mm -hmm. Uh, at a local police department. Uh, Tom, you've had experience both as an assistant district attorney and now as assistant AG. And John, you've been a federal agent, but you've had the opportunity to work with state officials, including we worked a long time, uh, a long time ago together when we were first looking at computer issues and internet safety in the child abuse unit. What are some of the challenges that face law enforcement around problems that arise here in terms of jurisdiction or other issues you've seen? The, uh at ICE, we're actually an international law enforcement agency, so some of the cases we deal with are on U.S. soil, and with internet investigations, many times it takes us overseas. One of the biggest challenges we've had for the 21 years I've been doing this is uh, that evidence is outside the country. Um, so the quicker we can get information and data and working with our foreign counterparts uh, that work out of U.S. embassies to work with foreign law enforcement that have to work with foreign banks or foreign inter internet service providers, I think you get the picture that it could be a quite complex uh, investigation to, uh, uh, to put together and solve. On the other hand, um, in New England and particularly in our state, um, there's a, uh, an excellent uh, network, if you will, of law enforcement and, and corporate security that um, have been quite nimble to, uh, to adapt and interact with citizens on getting the information. We need help uh, adapting to the technology and how criminals exploit it. Um, but more importantly, with just about any criminal intake, um, getting as much information from the public on suspicious activity on their own computers or others um, is always helpful. And I think we encourage people to report. I know sometimes it's frustrating for people because even though they report it, there may not be anything we can do in the short run, but certainly in the long run, having information to be able to spot patterns and trends makes it easier. What are some of the challenges, Tom, on the, on the state level in trying to pursue, for instance, oh, a theft of a credit card number or identity theft that we see. Uh, someone reports it to the AG's office. What are some of the, pr the concerns that we have in trying to pursue that? We actually have a lot of the same concerns at the state level as John was talking about at the federal level. The challenges are actually identifying someone in Massachusetts who is behind the theft or whatever the illegal activity is, and then after you've found the person, um, figuring out some way to actually get jurisdiction over them if they're 
uh, for instance, directing their conduct from Eastern Europe or from Africa. Um, as a practical matter, it's very difficult for anything to happen to them in Massachusetts. So just by default, it ends up going to the federal authorities. Also, these investigations can be very complex and time-consuming and labor-intensive. Well, given those challenges, I think we probably feel that the best way for people to keep safe first is prevention, making sure they understand what some of the risks are using credit cards or using communications online. And secondly, um, there are some tools available to people in the state if they believe that information has been stolen or their identity information has been breached. Do you want to talk about that briefly too, Tom, what someone can do in the state if what they should do if they believe, for instance, credit card or personal information has been stolen? Sure. Uh, there's a variety of things that, that people can and should do. Uh, the first thing that they want to do is they want to notify their credit card company to make sure that the credit card is canceled so that further theft can't happen as a result of it. Uh, they should also consider notifying their local police department. As part of the cybercrime initiative, we've done a lot of outreach and education to local police departments to educate them in how to respond to these incidents and uh, who should be reported or, or what types of crime should be reported and what steps they can take in response to that. In addition to that, uh, there's an organization called IC3. You can, anyone who is uh, potentially affected by one of these type of scams can uh, just Google IC3 and click on the IC3 website and then report that to IC3. IC3 is a quasi-federal agency that actually compiles this data and will then refer it to the appropriate agency. And that's important, again, to have people report even if there's not anything that we can do immediately. What do you see some of the trends in the future uh, in terms of uh, the importance of cooperation between the federal and the state level? What do you, where do we, where do we, we're going to clearly continue to do work and business online, communication online, so what do you think we uh, need to be able to do, John, going forward? Uh, a little bit closer working uh, relationships between uh, private sector security arms and uh, and law enforcement, particularly in, in, in their abilities to train law enforcement. A lot of, there's a lot of uh, Fortune 500 companies that have footprints in Massachusetts that have uh, um, very good relationships with us on investigations, but um, providing the training and their expertise um, discreetly to law enforcement so that other people don't know what our, our new tools are, our new skill sets. Um, I think that um, one of the challenges we see, not only internationally or nationally, is um, parents that are still trying to get uh, familiar with the technology and their, um, their, their children that are a little bit better. And um, we, we'd be definitely remiss in talking about internet safety or, or um, uh, computer safety to uh, make sure that the, the children user, the child users are an integral component of the uh, protective package of the computer household. And, and kids know a lot more in, in most cases than parents do, maybe except for day <laughs> kids, but not that his kids aren't savvy, but um, you know, it's the equivalent of a generation that didn't speak the language and the children kind of ran the household. So maybe for the next generation of law enforcement it'll be easier, but um, as we wind up here, we've covered a lot of ground uh, I want to refer folks, obviously, to our website for more information, for questions. But if there's one tip that each one of you want to give to our viewers around what they should do to keep safe online. Tom, I'll start with you. If it's too good to be true, or if it looks too good to be true, it, it is too good is. to be true. Dave? I, I would say that they have to keep their system up to date with the, the patches and the antivirus and the spyware, and they'll be ahead of the game. Okay, and John? Always be careful when you're online, and don't be afraid to ask for help before you press that next key. Okay. And I'm sure we could keep talking about this for a lot of more time. It's interesting for folks, I think. I'm afraid that we're out of time. Um, but we have gotten a lot of good information. And again, uh, I think that uh, what people should do is continue to ask questions. They can come to our, our website. They can talk to their kids. Uh, and there's a lot of good about technology. We just want to stay ahead of it to keep people safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm.